So when we start our arms, we're just gonna break it down into simple shapes like we usually do in life drawings. So we have um, our upper arm, which ends even with the rib cage. Our lower arm is two thirds of the upper arm. Our hand is two thirds of the forearm. So I'm gonna go kind of big um, so that we can get everything in here. So if this was my rib cage, and it, if it was, I'm doing half of the rib cage, I'm imagining my clavicle coming out and I'm gonna start the deltoid and it's going to, the deltoid comes down about even with the pectoral and then the, uh, the arm is gonna come down. And we're gonna have our medial epicondyle right on the inside and our, our deltoid is wrapping around like so and then out from under that, we're gonna see our biceps. So here's our biceps coming down and one of the tendons is gonna grab onto the radius and then it's all, we're also gonna have a little aponeurosis that kind of reaches out to kind of stabilize things for us. Um, underneath the biceps, we're gonna have the helper, the brachialis, which kind of does this. And the brachialis and the, and the uh, deltoid, they kind of end at the, the, where the deltoid ends is where the brachialis begins. So remember the bicep is in two heads so one of the heads, um, if this was my humerus, and it has the two tubercles with the intertubercular groove, and here's my scapula on the, from the inside, here's the glenoid cavity, here would be the scapula. We're doing like a transparency. And remember, it sends that coracoid process, that little finger piece through the front that sticks out the front. Well, the the short head of the biceps grabs onto that coracoid process and the long head goes up through that inner tubercular groove and then meets on that glenoid cavity. So there's two parts to it and the long head has to go further. So the long head's doing so and they, they kind of meet a little quicker than that. But your biceps start out as two and they end as one down at the bottom. So if I wanna, if I wanna show those long fibers coming down, I could do that. And then just kind of show them meeting somewhere in here. So, so you have more of a separation at the top and then they kind of meet at the bottom. If I wanted, if I want, I can kind of lay the deltoid over them to kind of show how that caps it off. Um, and then maybe I show a little of the brachialis underneath. So I'd want to emphasize the tendon here. And remember, if you're palm up, you see the tendon, palm down, you don't see the tendon. So then I want to do lower arm, and I know that the lower arm is two thirds of the upper arm. We saw a lot of muscles in here. Remember that we, as artists, we kind of look for the egg shape and then the block of tendons. So let's kind of break it down. And then remember that the hand is two thirds of the forearm and our hand can be divided in half. So we have this and here's our thumb. And we'll start with that. So remember we have our brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. So what we're gonna see from the front is the brachioradialis is gonna follow the thumb. So if your thumb's up, that brachioradialis, this guy right here, is gonna go wherever the thumb goes. So you can see how it crosses right here. And it's gonna go and it's gonna attach. So brachioradialis is just kind of sitting along the edge here. And, and uh, we'll see that. And then extensor carpi radialis longus and uh, brevis will be kind of on the back of that. So we mainly just see this. And then we're going to um, also see our flexors, so all of our flexors go to this medial epicondyle and they are all these tendons that we can see in our, in our hand. So we see the two main ones, um, the palmaris longus and the flexor um, carpi radialis. We'll see the carpi flexor carpi ulnaris um, as well. But imagine, remember multicaudal muscle is a bunch of tendons kind of from one belly area. So if I, let me get this guy just a little bigger over here. So if I imagine, um, say I have the palmaris longus, 
Remember, this one's missing in one in eight people. And this one's coming from up here, and so is the um, extensor carpi radialis. I'll see that down in here. The, it, the flexor digitorum is under these. If you kind of move your arm around, you might see that as well, kind of filling in this space. And then the flexor carpi ulnaris. So imagine we have this just a big group of muscles, and they're spreading out in here. And then we have some muscles that are uh, going particularly to our thumb section that we're gonna see kind of cutting across. Um, but mainly what we're gonna look for is mostly muscle up here. And again, you can do those little strands. Um, but imagine this is a multi-caudal. So you wanna kind of figure out, okay, where's my, where are the tendons? Where are the main tendons that I'm seeing? Digitorum is gonna spread out. So we're gonna have a, a, a bunch of tendons and then, they, and then we're gonna see like a few like separations in the muscle, but it's a lot of muscles. Here's the, this goes with the bicep, still it's that, that stabilizer and then this tendon's going, um, going straight down. Um, we might see uh, down low with our thinner group, and our hypothenar group of the hand, I, I would say we can get that in, show that the hand is hollowed out, and then the fingers. If you wanna show uh, the fingers and where some of those tendons actually come from, uh, end up, that would be great. But again, we're just kind of breaking it down into simple form. Remember in the thumb um, and the pinky side, we have the adductor on the outside, so adduct means to take away. We have a, a, a flexor in the middle, so the flexor would be in the middle, and that, that closes it. And then the opponents would be on the inside, and remember that helps to squeeze together. So those are the main muscles that we have in that uh, brevis uh, or the uh, thener, thener and hypothenar group. Um, and, then, and then the muscles in our hands are mostly extrinsic. That means they come from somewhere else, all these muscles here are coming from up here and they're closing our fingers. So we don't have any muscles in here except for the lumbricals, the ones that help us do delicate movements, and the interosseous muscles. Um, everything else is, is just here and here and they either, they either close the opponents, they uh, flex, or they spread. So those are the main things that we have. We have a little adductor in here too that helps pull the thumb back into place. So as long as we know that and we kind of emphasize where these uh, tendons are, we'll be in good shape from the front view. So let's, uh, let's try a back view. All right guys, from the back, we're gonna do the same thing. So we'll just start with the rib cage. I don't need the bottom of the rib cage. If this was the top, I'd have the shoulder line cutting across. Here's the scapula in the back, and our deltoid's gonna grab onto that. Here would be the trapezius. And uh, remember, the lat muscle takes the form here, and then the arm is gonna have a nice easy line. Here's the medial epicondyle, even with the rib cage. And then the deltoid's gonna end about even with the scapula, and it would kind of be wrapping around like so. I wanna put in just a little bit about where the humerus is in this. So the humerus would be coming down like so. And then here is the glenoid cavity and uh, and we would also, here would be the spine of the scapula um, and our chromion process, et cetera. Um, I want to go a little wider with that. But I, I put this in because we're going to be putting the triceps in. And the first thing that we're going to look for down here is the elbow, your olecranon process. Here's our uh, medial and lateral epicondyles of the humerus. And remember, this, is, this hook that I'm putting here is representing your ulna, this bone down here. However, we're going to hook the triceps tendon to it. So the triceps tendon can come pretty high up. And it's got uh, a medial head, a lateral head, and a long head. And so medial's down low. The long head is grabbing up and onto 
it comes up and through and grabs onto the scapula and then the lateral heads coming around and it's just grabbing onto the to the uh, humerus itself kind of along this line here so so you can get your striations kind of coming up and showing those muscles everything's going to center around this this big wide flat tendon that's easy to see when your person extends their arm and then the medial heads down underneath and I can kind of separate them so here's the lateral here's the medial and then anything else would be brachialis on the other side and if I want I might, I might kind of just show like where the deltoid lays across that and again, if you want, you can show the bone or you can cover this and show the striations. And now when we get down in here, remember on the outside, this is the edge of our humerus right here. Remember that, first of all, we're two thirds. So here's where our arm's gonna end. Um, and, I, and when we're drawing in life drawing, we usually have just a nice, easy going line on this, on this uh, in, inner part. And then we look for the egg with the block on the outer part. Um, because usually you see just a little bit of where where the muscle kind of ends and the tendon begins. So the block and the egg. I don't have a lot of muscles to show that on, but that's kind of what we're getting. And uh, what we're going to see on this is we're going to see that brachioradialis muscle, and it's going to follow the thumb wherever it goes. From under that, what we're going to see, we're going to get uh, the muscle known as the anconius. So look for that little guy, that little triangle. Um, we're going to go a little bigger with that. We're going to see the uh, extensor digitorum. So this is another multicaudal muscle that comes down, and it's going to send tendons to all four fingers down here. I might as well uh, indicate the hand. Um, we're going to get the extensor indices, the one that goes to your index finger. So indices for index. We're going to get the digiti minimi on the outside going to your pinky. So these would all be tendons going, to, going down. Um, and then back here, this is our ulnaris coming this way. So look for this to wrap around, look for this to come out from underneath, and again, this will kind of end, the muscle will end, and then you'll start to see a lot of tendons. It's all of these. And then what we've got here are your pollicis muscles. So the pollicis muscles, you have, um, you have an abductor, one that pulls it away, you have an um, extensor and an adductor. So you're going to have three pollicis muscles that are kind of filling this area in and creating these tendons that you're seeing here. So you'll get these kind of coming across the side here and going to the thumb. So that'll kind of fill things in for you on that side. So um, again, it's a kind of a lot of stuff, um, but that's all we're seeing on the forearm on the back side. If I was doing the forearm on the, on the medial side, so I'm starting here, and saying, okay, here's my forearm. Remember, we've got a lot of layers of muscles. So here's my forearm, here's my hand with its thener and hypothener. I would have my, my brachioradialis. So if this was where my elbow is, remember brachioradialis is up high. So if we're looking from the back here, we would actually see brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis, longus, and brevis. Sorry about that. So we got to get all three in there and then our digitorum and then here's our pollicis and here's the um, ulnaris and then our little anconius. So if my palm was up instead of down, we're going to see um, the, we're going to see the uh, brachioradialis, but we wouldn't see the extensor carpi radialis longus or brevis. Instead, uh, we would start seeing those uh, flexor tendons again, like before. So we looked at we looked at that in the in the previous drawing. Um, so the difference is um, over here we're showing all the 
flexors and on the back we're showing the extensors. So take a look at that and this ulnaris is going to end, the ulnaris ends on your ulna. So that's this tendon right here that we're seeing. And here's the uh, ul ulnar bone that that's going to grab onto. So again, on the inside, the brachioradialis, it's going down to the thumb. On the outside, we see it plus flexor carpi radialis longus, brevis. Here's our digitorum. Here's our pollicis. We'll have our extensor indices going to your index finger and our extensor digiti minimi going to your pinky finger. So that's how we'll set that up. And again, in the hand, if we just know that we have the thener and the hypothener group, um, then we're good on that as well. So that's kind of the basic setup. You can use your um, handouts to get as detailed as you want. Um, and again, if you want to do like, if I want to do this upper area and then I start to let it fall away to flesh, or I can, if you want, you can focus on just the lower area if you really want to get into that. Or on the inner arm, say you don't do the, um, the superficialis flexor, you do the, the underlying profundus, or even the really underlying, uh, the pronators and the supinators, um, you can do that as well. Remember we have that uh, retinaculum, that that ligament that holds everything in um, on both the inside and the outside that you, can, that you can show as well. If we look at a few of our examples over here, we'll just pan through and you can see how different people have chose to, to handle it. So think about your composition. You can do charcoal, you can do pastel, you can do digital, you can do Conte. And please, you can ask me questions at any time. And so we'll be drawing this week, the arms and hands, and then next week we will start on our upper leg.